Um, this is uh, the interview portion for the RFP for the acquisition of CRA property for the purposes of public parking. Uh, first up, we have uh, the Tesla Group, and um, it's your, basically your stage. We're, we're ready when you are. I can use the mic to what we're speaking to. Um, it picks up, so yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's Studio Seven. Right. <laughs> yeah. First, let me uh, thank you on behalf of of our partner and uh, and client CTN Developments, who I'm going to introduce and you hear more about later. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about the acquisition of CRA property for the purpose of providing public parking and redevelopment. And as we understood the RFP, you were looking for the developer to tell you how uh, their development would be catalytic for Cedar Island and at the same time provide an element for public parking. Uh, as you all know, I am the prior executive director of the Riviera B CRA and in fact acquired the properties to which uh, the CRA is selling. And it was in that plan that we understood that when Ocean Mall opened that parking was insufficient. And with the construction that was also happening in Palm Beach Shores as well as in Singer Island that uh, construction workers and others were parking at the Ocean Mall Individuals were going to the beach staying all day, and so it was impacting the patrons who were patronizing uh, the Ocean Mall. And so we acquired the properties with the intent of uh, helping the city improve its parking supply. Uh, what you're going to hear in our proposal, and with the properties that have been acquired by Mr. Wynn, is that we have the opportunity to not only connect this pedestrian walkway and the parking garage where we propose it be built at Plaza Circle that this will serve as a connection uh, to Ocean Mall. Uh, you'll hear about the hotel development that Mr. Wynn has spent the past six years in securing land in the intent to develop and this whole vision with the recent acquisition of an unrelated party that has acquired the Singer Island Yacht Club and have demolished it that now when you come over the bridge over the Blue Hand Bridge, and you see the beautiful water representing Singer Island, is that we're, our proposal is that it provides this new gateway and this new vibrancy along Blue Heron Boulevard that makes the opportunity to connect to the Ocean Mall just one great redevelopment. And overall, as you'll see, that this proposal also complies and is consistent with the development proposal from the CRA master plan. So about the team that's responding, so MTN, you'll see interchangeably, MTN and CTN, but the common denominator is who can win. And I'm gonna introduce Mr. Wynn. Uh, he has asked us to be his owner's rep and to represent him and to respond to this proposal. And we will share the history, the six year history he has had with the CRA in being a collaborative, being a collaborative partner for the whole purpose of providing parking, uh, Tesla was created by myself and Ezra Sappho, who will be introduced for the whole purpose of making Riviera Beach a better place to live, work, and play. Uh, the team that I introduced, you'll see, we have over 120 year experience. We are financially capable. Uh, my reputation nationally is as a transformative community developer, and I'm proud of the time I've spent. Uh, in Riviera Beach, and some of you know that my impact has been nationwide, uh, we've assembled a team that will deliver what we offer. And that we have a team that's experienced in the design, the construction, the management, the development of residential hotel, commercial, and destination properties, and that a parking garage should not just be a garage, particularly at Plaza Circle. So a parking garage should be designed to be iconic. Uh, I'm going to introduce Huku to say a little bit about himself, but I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to tell this personal story. So when we first met Huku, uh, and I say we, Scott and I, uh, he beat us in buying the Plaza Circle property. We had wanted to purchase that property, uh, and so we went to him to offer to purchase it. And he shared with us that he was uh, going to build a hotel at that site. But then we got to know Mr. Wynn, and what we found out that he immigrated to North America with just the clothes on his back. And he has built this phenomenal company where he's uh, been in the urgent care business, so those businesses has built an expansive uh, set of holdings, real estate holdings, not only just nationwide or globally, 
But his investment, as you'll see shortly, at Riviera Beach is indicative of his commitment uh, to our community and his vision. Who do you just want to come and introduce yourself? Hello. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for introducing me. Thank you very much for uh, the CIA and thank you for the city Riviera Beach. I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm immigration, but I uh, come to Singa Island. I love Singa Island. I like Singa Island a lot. I see they have a very good opportunity, you know, to improve the the area, to make the area a lot of better and a, a lot of more, you know, reputationable. That's why, you know, like uh, for the last six years, and I'm thank you so much for the CIA to give me the opportunity to. Um, to work with CIA, and uh, now I realize to continue to to work with CIA and uh, the city. To uh, I hopefully your uh, of you give me the opportunity to uh, to 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 develop the the area. So um, I I I I very believe on the area they really need for even the neighborhood. You know, like. Um, to make it more beautiful and more valuable for the area in, 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 in the time being. I, I know Chief Lubeck very long time, but, um, and then I talk, we talk, talk and talking about Singa Island. He told me, like for the last 10, 15 years, the same doesn't have any coming new and coming anything better. But uh, I hope this time all of you help us, you know, to make it more success and better. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you'll hear me continue to tell this story. Uh, Tesla Partners, as I said, is 100% my own company created by myself and Andrew Saffold. I talked a little bit about me. as the former director of, of the Rivia BCRA. I'm very proud of the fact that I structured the financing for the Marina Village. Members of my team were the architect and designer of this room that Song designed. Uh, uh, we've created the award-winning ambassador program. I thank Comerica Bank when we created the CDC, and we've, uh, as a fairly new organization, we got a significant grant from the county, but it was done on a reimbursement basis. Uh, as a former banker, uh, the credit facility that Comerica gave this nonprofit organization without any guarantee was a significant commitment on Comerica's part to the opportunity to revitalize our neighborhood. So the focus that we've had was not just on the waterfront, but was also on neighborhood development. My capital solutions have transformed communities in Ohio and Florida, and I'm proud to be Mr. Saffold's partner in the development of Riviera Beach. Good afternoon, guys. I'm Mr. Saffold, partner with Tony, and Tez are all partners, significant partners. So I'm here, and I'm here for Riviera Beach. I'm born, raised, founded my company in Riviera Beach back in 2001. We're third generation contractors. I've had my lessons learned here in Riviera Beach, first and foremost. And I'm, I tell you, I'm a product, I'm homegrown. I am from the community, I have a connection to the community, and my number one, or beside building it, is to involve as many contractors that are qualified and want to participate in the process. I, being a stakeholder, will assure that. Thank you. And so I'm going to ask my members of my team in the order of their logos to just introduce themselves and the whole purpose for you to know that we, we, know, the, we know the city, we know the zoning, they are capable builders, and that, as I said, that we have the reputation and experience of doing what we promise. Starting with Song & Associates. Good afternoon, I'm Jill Lanigan representing Song & Associates Architects. We just recently celebrated our 30th anniversary year, headquartered here in Palm Beach County. We are a minority and women-owned business enterprise as well as being a local Palm Beach County small business enterprise. Uh, throughout our history, we've served mainly governmental entities, municipalities and CRAs like yourself. Um, we're most proud of some of our successful local projects, like the Marina Village, as Tony mentioned, and smaller projects that have had huge community impact, like the Community Garden and Linear Park here in Riviera Beach. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I am Rob McConnell with uh, WGI. Uh, WGI is a uh, multidisciplinary, transportation-focused uh, planning, design, and engineering firm. Uh, founded in 1972 with offices uh, all over the United States, uh, but headquartered just down the street in, uh, in West Palm. Um, 
I represent the, uh, the parking services division in, in WGI, and as such, I'm the, uh, the parking subject matter expert. Uh, I've been uh, designing and consulting on parking structures for about 25 years, uh, all over the country and, and in Florida. Uh, we have uh, award-winning projects um, and award-winning mixed-use projects, not just standalone uh, parking structure project. Uh, my, uh, my role and responsibility is to work with uh, Kaufman Lynn and, and Song to create the best uh, parking uh, for this particular development uh, to support it uh, economically, functionally, and aesthetically. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Ryan Ryder. I'm the Director of Government Relations for Kaufman Lynn Construction. Uh, we've been in the business uh, for about 30 years now. Actually, we just celebrated our 30th, 30th anniversary this year, this January. Um, we have done multiple uh, public-private partnerships, specifically with municipal acquisitions, who you'll hear about here in a few minutes. Uh, there was the first one with the state. Uh, we did a, with Broward College. Um, we've done everything from small fire stations all the way up to a hundred million dollar uh, assisted living facilities. We most recently, uh, related to this project, completed the parking garage in Pompano Beach and the A loft in Delray Beach. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Angela Perry. I'm here on behalf of the Mosaic Group. We're a full service public relations and marketing firm here in Palm Beach County. We've been in business since 2005 and we're best known for our diversity, grassroots efforts, and community engagement. So that's the role that we are going to play on this team and we're very excited to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Chip Lubeck. I'm the owner and broker of One World Realty. My family has been in the real estate investment business on Singer Island for the past 45 years. Um, I first met Tony when he came to town years ago and, and we talked about the vision and, and what was going to happen in Singer Island and how great it would be. My, all my holdings are on the island so I have a vested interest in making it the best place I possibly could and then met Huku. Uh, Huku lives on Singer Island, has a house there, is very invested in uh, and what's going to happen on St. Cloud. And I think the collaboration between uh, everybody in the room is going to make this project really beneficial for the residents of St. Cloud and the city of Rivera Beach. So thank you. Uh, but this acquisition is who's not here, but whose commitment is in your packet. Uh, they've committed not only to finance parking uh, for uh, the Ocean Mall or the uh, St. Cloud project, but they've also proposed to provide uh, over $60 million of financing for parking here on the marina in our proposal. Municipal Acquisitions uh, is a private investment uh, company. Uh, their investors are some of the major insurance companies, pension and investment funds uh, throughout the nation. And they have over $400 million in their portfolio and they strictly finance uh, public real estate. So, continuing on. So in the proposal and in the, in the outline for questions, you ask us to specify what the financial terms are for the acquisition of the CRA properties. Uh, we're going to let you know that, that, that we're not just responding to the RFP. Uh, Mr. Wynn has been in partnership with the CRA since 2013, uh, that the site control is secure, uh, that if all things were ready, we could start construction tomorrow, that the parking location is consistent with the CRA master plan, and that uh, and that the design of a parking structure at Plaza Circle will produce 332 public parking spaces, not counting the spaces required for the retail that exists on Blue Heron, but the excess spaces of 332 public parking spaces exceed the RFP requirements. So I talked about the location and what the catalytic impact of this is. Uh, your property uh, is, is in red. Uh, what occurred six years ago is that uh, the CRA and, the, and CTN uh, entered, into, entered into a ground lease where the CRA is leasing uh, this property. And that in structuring that deal, uh, the CRA has the option to purchase uh, that land. And in purchasing that land, they can only purchase that land if it opted to build a parking structure. So it wasn't new, it was consistent with the master plan, and so thus uh, the board uh, approved the deal six years ago. And But what Mr. Wynn did, he said, look, uh, provided that it meets zoning, that I would like to put the hotel on top of the parking structure. So at the time, the only parcel he owned 
was the lot. He has since acquired illustrated property, and he's since acquired uh, every parcel fronting Blue Heron from park to lake. And so when we say that site control is prevalent, <coughs> it is prevalent. He is proposing to, uh, to acquire the CRA property initially for a 50 year lease, a dollar a year, maintain it in its present state as a pedestrian uh, walkway, and that then as we work together on the design and the location of the parking in the hotel, is that he then perhaps have the option, uh, the option to purchase, and to purchase it at the then market rate. And I would suspect that we were the notion, negotiating that it would be at the appraised value at that time. So this slide simply reiterates what I just said. It, again, the bottom matrix is showing that this proposal is consistent with the master plan. When we met Mr. Wynn, this was, this was what we were trying to effectuate. Put the parking structure uh, at Plaza Circle. Uh, this is Ocean Mall. Put the parking structure at, at Plaza Circle and allow for it to be incrementally catalytic for the redevelopment of Blue Heron to the bridge. Uh, the parking structure at Plaza Circle is consistent with the master plan. Uh, we've talked about that the terms of the ground lease gives the CRA the, per the option to purchase the property. And so the proposal would be the CRA purchase the lease property, build the parking garage. And, and I want to clarify, so we're not asking, so in building the parking garage in financing terms does ask that the city of Riviera Beach serve as the master tenant. Now, someone, someone would say, well, then are you asking the this, this city to pay for parking? Well, when this way acquisition, if they were asking that question, they said, we're asking the city to, in, to mitigate the risk of parking. If this development and the proposed development doesn't create a tax revenue, and Andre, let me know how many minutes I have. Yeah, that's two minutes. Well. That's two? Okay. If, if it doesn't create the TIF to pay for the parking garage itself, you shouldn't do this deal. So in economic community development uh, financing, the goal is, is to get the private development to pay for the parking. The reason why it has to be a public-private partnership, as you'll see, is that Mr. Wynn has paid four and a half million dollars for the property you see that comes out to 2.25 uh, million an acre. The parking garage costs nine and a half million dollars. If it was just about the hotel, a 19 million dollar hotel given the land cost just cannot do it. If you ask anyone that you're looking to buy property, folks feel that their real estate is worth five times, two to five times more than market value. So if we are going to have a partnership and for it to be catalytic uh, for uh, Singer Island, it has to be a public-private partnership. So the proposed investment between the site acquisition, the cost of parking, is about $11 million. The financing terms are in place. You wouldn't start with the parking garage unless the hotel development is to occur simultaneously because that's how you pay for it. Uh, you asked for the concept plans and approach. I'll go through that since I know my time is running out. We'd be ready uh, to build the uh, hotel once the parking solution is resolved. Uh, the, the floor plan shows 68 parking spaces. It keeps the existing retail uh, at Blue Heron in place. Uh, Mr. Guy Hill is the most significant property owner in, in this area, but it keeps that in place. Uh, the, our floor is two, two to four, so it's a four-story parking garage. Uh, there are about 312 parking space, 380 total, 68 parking spaces on the ground floor. And then there's an optional amenities deck. So with this, Mr. Wynn knows that uh, unless he acquired more land, he, he can't go up to the maximum of eight stories. And so in our proposal, we show that he has the real estate to put a linear hotel on Blue Heron between Park and Lake. Uh, what we have looked at is an option, uh, we didn't have enough time in the RP to continue the conversation that Mr. Wynn has had with the property owners there about getting air rights so that the, the retail that now looks like 50% is now vacant, as I just recently drove, uh, uh, that would get rehab and with the air rights, the option of perhaps still putting a hotel fronting uh, Blue Heron and then having an opportunity instead of having $19 million worth of private development, that then if we're able to do this scenario, he can still develop Blue Heron and then we're talking about a 38 or $40 million development that clearly would pay for the cost of parking. 
we projected it'll take us about five years. The most important thing in having done development in this community is to make sure that we're working with the community in both the design and the community engagement, and you heard the partners that would lead uh, that <coughs> process. Uh, with our package shows the financial feasibility, site control is secure, the money is there, the team is strong, capable, and able, and reputable so that the community engagement piece is done in a very respectful manner. And with that, we thank you for the opportunity to present our proposal to you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank Brown. You. So, thank you. All right. so now we're going to start from our left. Uh, I want you uh, to introduce yourself. And if there are any pertinent questions that uh, Mr. Brown hasn't hit uh, that, that is visible on our, our rubric, sure. please go ahead and ask that. And I'll ask my teammates to join me in the Q&A response. Uh, John Gustafson, uh, Singer Island homeowner, um, also a mechanical engineer and yacht designer. Um, president of the Singer Island Civic Association, and I'm also a member of the Riviera Beach Planning and Zoning Board. Um, the only question that I'd like to ask is, in your concept drawings, I didn't see a whole lot of green space or any type of, how, how are you going to move the property parking spaces to be feasible with a lot more beach style green spaces. And, and I'll give a quick response and maybe Joe others will talk about this. So, which, so we know that in order to, in, in talking to the residents, in order to get the height that the zoning requires more or less side yard setbacks, the creation of green space. And so in, in this conception drawing, uh, uh, actually there's probably a different slide I can show. We, uh, the short answer is we, we know that, we understand how important that is. Obviously this will be a conversation between us and the community, uh, and and, uh, and that the location and addition of, of green space would be part of the design. This is the conception drawing so that you have an understanding of what could be built, but the issue of uh, public green space we know uh, is vital. And we are looking at the green space being along the Plaza Circle side on the east side, where it curves in toward um, Ocean Mall. You can see a little bit of it there. Just conceptual at this point, but we are aware of the setbacks as a high <coughs> And then the CRA parcels, so the um, added road starts here. There, there was an option for um, green space on top of the garage as well. Yeah, I mean, but John, to your point, absolutely correct. We know that in this concept, uh, that in order to get the height density requested, that you have to have setbacks. Uh, and that brings on a dilemma, right? Because if Carl Presto, for instance, would sell his property, it's an $18 million request, uh, or some large number that I understand he's offered in the past. And you know that's just not economically feasible. So in that sense, then we have to work together to talk about how do we achieve parking in a way that the investment that have been made uh, uh, are offset. Sure. Okay. okay. And then we'll move to the uh, yep. Thank you very much. My name is Chris Laws. I'm an architect engineering consultant with the firm Desmond. We specialize uh, specifically in parking structure and facility and system planning and design. Um, question I had, Tony, I think you mentioned 322 public spaces. Right. How many are needed to serve the existing development? In the retail, I know it's in your packet, so it's 380, 380 minus 322, that number. Okay, you mentioned 68, but there, does that initial concept then include a hotel? Uh, yeah. So the, the hotel, no, because the hotel parcels of 120 space is on the linear portion of our concept in, in the drawing and the design. So the 380 parking spaces is just that class of circle, and it accounts for uh, 78 parking spaces that will continue to support the, the, the retail uh, that exists. The other thing that I know that in this diagram is, is that it's a dedicated easement, and so we'll have to work closely with the city. Well, that's one of the rationale for the city to buy the land uh, so that the parking can stay permanent and that the issues of right-of-way and egress uh, remains because 
you would think that the existing parking that exists here goes with the buildings. It doesn't. And I think it's, it's deed restricted so that those businesses can continue to have uh, parking to support their operations. Okay. And, and I did read your, your parking study, and so I clearly understand, and you, uh, we understand that the opportunity uh, to make sure that there's ample parking is also an economic development strategy. Because without parking, you can't recruit tenants. And developers who are buying with the cost of land and the cost of parking uh, begins to make it economically difficult. Okay. Thank you. Glenn? My name is Glenn Spiritus. I have a PhD in urban environmental science. I'm a former city manager, former director of planning and community development for a number of communities. Uh, lived on Singer Island for almost 20 years now. And I'd like to thank you all for coming here and putting on your presentation and submitting your proposal. It's been very interesting. Uh, my question is concerning the height. Uh, right now, what height do you think you have if you go with the linear hotel along uh, Blue Harrow? Uh, if I recall, I think we stay with the zoning. I think it's four stories. Four stories. So you'll limit it to about 50 feet, so figuring 50 feet to the roof? Yes, and then you know, if there was an opportunity to go higher, it would have to meet the requirements of the public benefit open space and also the setbacks that were mentioned earlier. Because you're aware that Singer Island turns. Yes. When you hit the sea winds. And a lot of people have a view down at the Palm Beach, and we want to make sure that that view obviously isn't, isn't obstructed. Uh, so this project can work with a linear hotel. So there won't be any residential planned in this project, it's strictly retail and hotel? Uh, I don't want to say what, so we'll, um, Mr. Wynn would say his preference would be the reason why he's, he's acquired this would still be to put the hotel on top of the parking deck. Uh, and that the, the height restrictions and knowing how passionate the community is about the view corridors, we know has to be a good open discussion. Uh, and so we would lead with that sensitivity. And, and so the, the short answer is we would love to have a discussion to see what are the other alternatives that the community would support. Um, and then we move forward together. Okay, thank you. You answered my question. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing? Andre Lewis, project manager with the Riviera Beach CRA. Uh, my question specifically is uh, with respect to the two properties that are in this uh, RFP, Specifically, what are we doing with these properties? And how are we marrying these two properties with the robust uh, project that you've just presented to us today? So in, in our proposal, we said that during the initial term, so what, what Mr. Wynn is concerned with is that those properties will get sold uh, when he, in good faith, has worked to assemble the real estate to do what he promised six years ago. So if his primary objective now is site control. So if the properties will remain as they are, we will provide the upkeep, thus the request for the land lease. So we can go through the process of where the garage goes and stay located. Uh, I won't pretend to be Mr. Evans, but if I were, I would negotiate back during the lease term uh, those properties in exchange for Plaza Circle so that I can ensure that there's adequate green space in doing the parking. So, Andre, if I'm, if I'm answering uh, your question, is that the goal now is to have site control so we can continue to collaborate and deal with the issues of height, green space, parking, location. And so as we work those issues together, then the economics of who controls the land and where does the hotel and parking go are then resolved. Okay, we have time for two more questions. Uh, My name is Pierre Rodriguez, I'm with Comerica Bank. I've been in Comerica as a vice president of Comerica Bank office here in, in Riviera Beach for nine years. Thank you all for coming and your nice presentation. Uh, my concern, of course, since it's the banker, is the uh, financial feasibility. You were saying that uh, it was a capital solutions. Uh, I guess you have, you feel comfortable with that, and I know Mr. Negrin has already made a considerable amount of investments already, so he owns all that land currently, 
you feel comfortable with the somewhere between 11 to 18 million dollar potential uh, project getting financed? Have you, have you looked at that? Have you had conversations with them? So, so the, the, the approach, the request, the partnership is that through a P3 public private partnership, that the parking is financed uh, in a public private partnership with the city. That municipal acquisition as an investment mm -hmm. firm would provide the parking and they, their requirement is that the city serve as uh, the master tenant. Uh, obviously then uh, the, the city doesn't want its general funds to pay for parking. So then are we doing a $19 million development, a $10 million development, or $40 million? Right. So the $40 million, whatever the interest rate is, is going to generate taxes. What happens in community economic development, you ask that what we pay in taxes go back to cover public infrastructure, be it parking, uh, green space, lighting, and whatever. So this collaborative exercise is the extent to which he can invest density, which generate tax revenue, which is then out. So then the CRA would obviously negotiate with the city to say that the TIF, because remember, this increased investment doesn't go to the city or the county. It goes back to the CRA. And so if the finance director was asking about this project, he would likely negotiate that the value created by Mr. Wynn and the taxes paid ensure that the city and its taxpayers aren't paying for the parking. And so that's the financing uh, strategy Structure. that we're proposing. Structure the deal. And he, and you had, and had in, in, the, in your package, you have a letter from Mr. Wynn's uh, bank to show, you see the typical bank reference, uh, how substantial the relationship he has with CIPC. All right, well, I want to say thank you, Mr. Brown, and to the Tesla Group and to the other uh, players. Uh, thank you for your, um, you'll, you'll be hearing from us. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it over for him? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank KW Preferred Partners. And you guys have the floor, so whenever you're ready, yeah. your time starts now. speak with you and make this proposition with you and take a look at our proposal. Um, so our goal is to make history here. As a focal point, our idea is to create a legacy for the city of Rivera Beach and the residents there with them. Just a uh, brief synopsis about the team that's in front of you and behind you today. Um, our background is composed of a developer, an architect, 
a general contractor, and our consulting agents, which is myself and my partner, Segura Diaz. Our combined group is of over 200 years of experience. Mr. Zipes himself has been involved in some of what is $5 billion in transactions, both as a developer and as a broker. Our architect on board with us, Seeger Suarez, has completed more than 21 to 25 of the high rises on Sunny Isles alone. With among those is the Porsche Tower, where they have their own patent pending elevator that actually transports your vehicle to the floor that you live on. Also among us with our team is JJW Construction, Mr. Thomas Walsh II is the president. He's present with us today as well and has an unblemished record and ensures a completion bond for every development with an experience in expanding of nearly 40 years in, constru in construction history. Your consultants here, myself and our partner here, have both interacted and been involved in multiple real estate transactions, each residential and commercial, and include plans of community meetings and so forth for further involvement. In short, our community, or I'm sorry, our team is comprised of a very experienced and successful developer with specific focus on previous revitalization plans and RFPs um, across the nation, in fact. Uh, we also have, in short, what would be considered your first round pick as far as architectural firms are concerned, and that is of Sega Suarez, and one of the most competitive construction companies, JJW, here in South Florida. With that being said, our professionalism speaks for itself. Moving along with our slides, some of the, want to give you a brief kind of understanding of some of the works that Sega Suarez has completed. I'm sure you're familiar with some of the designs you're seeing. The River House on Los Olas, the first to begin the trend of uh, extremely um, impressive condo slash hotel buildings in South Florida. Getting right into it. Try to keep the slides going on as I go through this. In response to your proposal, okay, this is basically what we are looking to achieve. The society has built over several garage facilities, including 850 cars, uh, the largest facility subject to winning an RFP in the city of Albany, New York. So when I spoke on some of his experience, this is just to mention a small bit of that. Um, where those spaces were a minimum of, for what we're looking for, 450 square feet per square um, space, per square foot for the spaces required for what we looked at. For this portion, for the, the direction that we're looking to go, based on the city's needs, uh, being between 151 and up uh, car spaces. So from his experience alone in doing that, we have surpassed that. Our terms are based on the suits to what the city needs. The type of land rights in exchange in the proposal will not require any financial dollars from the city. And this is both of Riviera Beach and CRA and will be, whichever best suits the city, total responsibility of the developer. This proposal will provide a new source of continued revenue of between two to four million. That is our objective with this proposal today. At this moment, we do not have site control due to the research conducted this far. What we have researched instead has revealed yet an alternative solution for the city of Rivera Beach and the CRA who will both benefit greatly while gaining a much needed additional income for the city. What we have found is the availability for a possible 300 plus parking spaces in the most ideal location available. One more slide for And that is this location here. You have what's coming off of the <coughs> here on the beach court. There's serious properties All right. here. The reason why this location is highlighted is just speaking on residential that's right behind it in one of the aspects on why that location would not be ideal um, as far as property value is concerned. The last thing we want to do is affect the community in a negative manner. Moving forward, 
What we have found is that the availability for the possible 300 parking spaces in this location is basically more than exceeding the request that the CRA has, request, is, has proposed. The location of the garage in the section that we've highlighted there would allow for pedestrians to access the beach and retail plaza and the restaurants without crossing any major roadway, further providing a safe and accessible beach experience in Riviera Beach. Keep in mind that the city houses events, the egress and ingress logistics will be much more efficient and by using the proposed provisions, which we are going to explain to you, this possibility is actually accomplished. By having anything set up here and creating a further walking distance, the idea is because of the increased traffic that you will have more flow here and you create more of an unsafe environment and we are moving forward past that is the goal. In summary, to summarize that vision, the vision is simple. Provide 300 plus parking with a garage, additional retail and restaurant where Riviera Beach residents and city employees will park for free. However, revenue is to be gained as a result of this parking garage from non-residents, tourists and visitors with respect to the city's events, private events and any other sanctioned occurrences. Additionally, the vision includes a beach resort which will add further value to the beach, bring in retail, restaurants, in combination with the aforementioned parking garage where a percentage of the revenue combined will be provided to the city available to, will be provided, excuse me, a price to the city and assist the city's needs for each department, which I will elaborate. The beach will not be privatized, and will be 100% available to the public, further enhancing the beach experience with added beach amenities. What we're asking for is to build on the sand where the city has deemed ideal in agreement with Omni Realty Development Corp that is both viable and conducive to the build, therefore increasing the entire Riviera Beach experience for residents and tourists alike. In short, by building a parking garage in this site right here, maximizing the usage of that area, you now create a safer environment for all city events that are occurring in this area. You're actually creating a revenue that has been unforeseen. Okay, additional revenue. This area also allows for the ability to house significantly more vehicles. That is approximately two acres, 2.01 acres to be exact, of maximized use. We're talking about a, a parking garage that can be easily five floors and achieve your goals to include more plus. Some of the, the visuals that you saw, like the Porsche Tower from Cedar Suarez and how they have a history of making fields and so forth along the coast, shows that they do the appropriate research and experience coupled with our developer to make these types of projects possible and enhancing the beauty of the area. Our development plans show how the provided parcels from CRA, in this case, are not adequate for the proper build. Whereas what we're showing you is an alternative, it's just that simple. We're asking for a maximum height where, as needed based on what area of the sand is provided by the city of Riviera Beach. So when it comes to respect of how tall the building and how that will affect the beauty of the community, that is our utmost purpose. The resort in this question will be visually pleasing, stunning, and innovative like those previously displayed from Cedra Suarez. This will be a positive effect on the community, enhancing land value and greatly impacting the city's economics which I remind you is from the added income that the city would now receive. The project narrative and approach is in this direction. Once you award Omni Realty Development Corp with this binding agreement and allow us to come back to the city of Rivera Beach with certified conceptual architectural plans and complete architectural plans. So we have the conceptuals, which we will come back to you during an extended amount of period 
review and have meetings with the city and the public organizations to assure that we are meeting satisfactory throughout that process. We would also need time for geotechnical land resource research, windage research, and a relative surveys to include proper zoning. This would account for the appropriate research needed to build a project of this caliber. Being that we are in Florida, obviously, Florida has water running under it, especially as you get closer to the coast, it is imperative that the research is done appropriately. We will need, and what we're asking for, is approximately 150 days, including a possible 30-day extension, to achieve a desirable product. Providing plans before any research is completed, especially of those of geotechnical drilling and so forth, would be a misleading and inaccurate project or proposal without having to complete appropriate research. That alone requires at least three months. Okay, so if you're asking where are the drawings, where are any kind of images in that source and why I'm showing you previous work is because we have the ability to execute that and we have a history of doing so on the caliber that we're speaking about. However, to draw something and tell you that this is where it's going to be without having done the appropriate research is completely misleading. It's the direction that I'm going in. What we would like to do is come back with a master plan during that 150 day process, address the city's needs, ensure that the direction that we're going on with a set of deliverables is consistent as you hold us accountable and we keep you informed and deliver the product that you desire. We have two visions. We have a short term and we have a long term. Providing an immediate build solution, okay, to the city's needs in parking, increase revenue and create more employment opportunities for Riviera Beach residents in an effort to revitalizing the city. Our long term is an economic and large economic benefits goal for the proposed properties and develop. Change the future of Riviera Beach, therefore creating a legacy, which I've spoken on before, and increasing and adding to the, to the community in each department head, speaking with the chief of police, fire, parks, CRA, and every representation therein, and assisting in the community and helping build and grow and find out what those needs are. That is our optimum goal at this point. What I'd like to introduce to you is Mr. Richard Zipes himself so that he can speak and elaborate on quite a few terms. Financially, we will not require any funds from the city and we do not need, as far as money is concerned, from the city of River Beach or CRA. What we are requesting is cooperation and assistance moving forward so that we can complete a project of this caliber. Mr. Zipes, if you will. Good afternoon. Thanks for inviting us. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, great job, Justin Guillermo. Um, when uh, Guillermo and uh, Justin first approached me, uh, I was taken aback relative to the site which was proposed for the uh, parking by the CRA. I'm delighted that uh, Mr. Louis Luz is here from Desmond. He understands parking extremely well and he knows that you can't package what is uh, desired into the existing site. He knows it firsthand because he knows square footages and all that. So we were only allowed a certain amount of time, you know, to speak. I ask your tolerance relative to giving me a little bit of time as to going into my background and our thoughts. And um, I can assure you I have shoes in my closet that are older than uh, Justin. And I used to have a lot of hair, um, but that goes, you know, without saying. But in any event, um, my parents were born in Harlem. My grandparents 
immigrated on both sides from Russia. My father never graduated from high school, and he worked as a uh, elevator salesman, primarily to real estate people. And in 1939, when I was born, he quit his job and started going into the real estate business. I just want to skip a beat. My son, Philip, if you'll just put up your hand, is here. And he's here because he wanted to view <clears throat> how government works, or in the alternative, it doesn't work. And we're hoping that you give us the opportunity to work with government and make it work. Having said that, some 48 years ago, the mayor of Albany, New York, gave me a call, asked me to come up and see how I can help revitalize the city of Albany, which was in dire need of assistance. <clears throat> and I took a ride. I used to, I'm a New Yorker. I lived about two hours and 15 minutes away by car from Albany, drove up to Albany, met with the mayor, who was the senior most reigning mayor in all of the United States and the only mayor of the city of Albany. And he took me around, showed me around, and there was a big <coughs> site, a hole, and uh, gave it some thought. And I said, well, why don't we build a 392-room Hilton Hotel? Now, you have to remember, this was 48 years ago. And with his cooperation, I completed a 392-room Hilton Hotel. And it required dealing with the city. It required dealing with the state. And it required going to Washington, D.C. twice in order to get a $3 million UDEG, Urban Development Action Grant. And we did, we accomplished it. That led to my opening an office in Albany, New York, while I still maintain an office on 49th and Madison in New York City. And we are the largest owner developers of anything in and around Albany, New York, and its CBD. And I've responded to several RFPs, including one that was shown on the graph behind me, which was an 850 car parking facility. And it was a RFP that we designed, built, so we know what we're doing relative to garages and whatever has been suggested relative to the existing site just is not feasible or economical and doesn't work, period. In addition, I responded to an RFP for the dormitory authority by the state of New York where they wanted uh, 200,000, 280,000 square foot commercial office building. We won it and we built it. I also introduced the president of Progressive Insurance Company to Albany, New York. They had no offices there or whatever the case may be. Convinced them to open an office and we designed, built a, an office building for Progressive Insurance within the city CBD. This is, excuse me. Yes, um, for the purposes of time, um, we want to go ahead and jump into because the question and answer portion. Uh, because we don't want you guys to lose points, to be quite frank. So I, I want to go ahead and move into the Q&A portion of this, the, this presentation. Will you be uh, responding to the question and answer? Whatever you desire. Okay. All right. Go ahead, John. Uh, John Gustafson, Singer Island resident, uh, mechanical engineer and yacht designer. Also, uh, uh, I'm the president of the Singer Island Civic Association. I'm also on the Riviera Beach Planning and Zoning Department. Um, at this time, I don't have any questions. Chris Laws. Thank you. Desmond, we're uh, <clears throat> architect engineers and planners of parking facilities and systems. Um, I'm in the Fort Lauderdale office. We've been working in Riviera Beach about going on our fourth year uh, for the city. 
and I sit on the advisory board CRA in uh, Fort Lauderdale. The, this is a, a little bit more difficult for me in particular to review just because um, if I stick to reviewing it for the RFQ, it makes it challenging to score it in the way that I think you're talking about. And that is looking at an opportunity on the beach and looking at a garage on the uh, site behind Ocean Mall Retail, um, which may make sense, but or m may be feasible, but that's way out of our purview since it's a zoning issue. And the city has already expressed to me that they don't want a garage on that surface parking lot site. That, that's fine. We don't have so, a problem with that. We, we, we're going to mesh the planet so that it works, but it doesn't work on the other side. Just uh, as a side note, I'm the developer of Las Olas River House. It's a 42-story condominium in the heart of the CBD of Fort Lauderdale. I did it at a time when there was no housing whatsoever in the city of Fort Lauderdale. As a matter of fact, they wanted to send me to the crazy house because across the river from the Las Olas River House is the county jail. Mm -hmm. But if I told you it was a Hilton Hotel, you wouldn't know the difference between the county jail and a Hilton Hotel. So it was extremely successful. I didn't know one single resident or professional in the city of Fort Lauderdale. Likewise, I can speak for myself. I don't know one single resident, politician, or anybody else in Riviera Beach. But I did go on the internet and I looked up Riviera Beach, and what it said to me was, it's the one, one of the most, 100 most dangerous cities in the United States. So I said to myself, wow, what a challenge this is. I don't care about Singer Island. Singer Island will take care of itself. What we want to do is introduce ourselves to the core city of uh, Riviera Beach and see to it that something good happens in the core city of Riviera Beach. This, this is a layup. We need to address what's going on in the core city and we're willing to commit our dollars to that. As an example, if the high school needs a turf you know, a field relative to a playing field, it's a million dollars. We'll see to it it gets done. The city of Fort Lauderdale has a Jack and Jill, which is an aftercare facility so that their parents can drop off their children and be looked after. Our interest is working with the community, sing around, take care of itself. We, we're interested in making sure that something happens good in the core city of Riviera Beach. There's only 120 police, to my knowledge, relative to the city of Riviera Beach. I want to know if you're committed in writing to increase the number of police and make sure that part of the funds that we generate for the city of Riviera Beach go to improving the police force and other needs of the core city of Riviera Beach. And I hope I've made myself clear. Okay. Glenn, you have to Well, my name is Glenn Spiritus. Uh, I'm familiar with your projects. My, I have my PhD from Rensselaer. RPI. So I know your project's up in Albany. I assume you're talking about Mayor Corning. Nice man. I know him a number of times on projects. He's a very nice man. Uh, my question with this, pertaining to this project, is you're looking to build on the public beach area. How much of that are you, are you open to how much of that is going to remain public? We want to redevelop the entire area. All of it will remain open to the public. We will never take away any of the rights that the citizens of Riviera Beach or visitors come and utilize. We'll enhance them. We won't take anything away. Okay, and, and height. You're all, I know you're, you're used to building high buildings, and I know your buildings in, in Albany as well. Uh, you're open to discussions with 
pertaining to the height of the buildings? What we'd like to do is have 150 days to come back with a master plan, meet with you all, get your comments, and then address your comments and try to make the changes so that we're all in compliance and uh, on the same page. Okay. Are you looking at a 300 room hotel? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Pardon me? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. More. It, I'm sorry? You're not stuck to a number. I mean, most no. hotel developers. No, we have no idea. That 300. No idea. Okay. okay. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. Um, Andre Lewis, uh, project manager with the Revere BCRA. Uh, one of my questions are, uh, in your presentation, you stated that um, the city feels that it's viable to put a structure where you're proposing. Um, where did this information uh, we're not. come from? Mm. We're not. We're never going to block. It doesn't make sense okay. that you put a parking structure on the blacktop and then you can't see the retail. It doesn't make any sense. Well, I, I'm more referring to the, the, the beach area. Um, you said it was a viable, based on the city, you said it was a viable option to place a, a hotel there. So is that something that you pull from the city's master plan or is that no. something, wh where did you... No, Mr. Lewis, we don't even know who we're dealing with. We don't know who owns what. We don't have a meets and bounds survey. We don't have any soil investigation. We have nothing. We don't know if this is a ground lease. We know nothing about this. Okay. So what we want to do is have an opportunity to research this and find out, you know, how can we redevelop it mm -hmm. with everybody's interest on the same page. Thank you. And from a financing standpoint, what you're telling me is that this is going to be fully funded or self-funded. Correct. 300 to 500 million dollars. That's the uh, seed, or that's the uh, allotment that you provided to redevelop the entire area on Singer Island. That's, that's correct. Point, with some of the funds potentially going to the core city. Not some, a lot. And very large for them. That's correct. Okay. But this cannot be accomplished if it's not a private public partnership. We're not asking for one dollar from the city. We are asking for their cooperation. We may ask for tax breaks but not a dollar of cash money from the city. We'll self-fund this. We've done it in the past. We've never entered into a, uh, an agreement or a contract where we didn't fulfill our obligations. And through that self-funding, you also want to have complete control of the project, correct? Well, when you say complete control, please explain yourself. Then you'll be doing the management of it and no, not necessarily, because again, we don't know who owns what. I don't know who owns this CRA, you know, retail center, or whatever the case may be. So there's going to be trade-offs, okay. and we want to work with the city to ensure them that they profit from whatever is done, as well as ourselves. I mean, we're not mercenaries. Right, right, right. You're not in it for the glory. You're in it for the money. <laughs> but, well, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, it's a win-win for both, or don't do it. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, we have, we have, hold on a second. So, you have a question? Yeah, question? I do. Okay, so we're, we have, we have no time, but we're going to ask these two questions because it's important. Um, Glenn, go ahead and ask your okay. question, and then well, John. You, you, you mentioned the pilot. Came in with taxes. Are you, are you, is this project dependent upon a pilot or? Absolutely. It's not. It, it is dependent Absolutely. Upon okay, that's what I want to know. And uh, my quick question is so the, for you being here today, you're mostly asking for a 150 day extension to see if there could be some type of collaboration with your corporation and your setup so we can look at a project that may be viable for the situation at hand. 100% correct. Thank you. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys. Thank you for coming out and thank presenting. Um, we'll, thank you. You'll be hearing from us very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. We know you guys very well. I mean, how do you know the rest of the I went to break up. We don't have a big monolith right toward the ocean. Right here would be the hotel. 
Um, and right here would be the residences. Below that is a six deck parking garage. And on the ground floor is retail. There's also some on grade parking as well. Uh, this sh shows the actual breaking up of the massing of the buildings. So you can see through it, and wind can go through it. It's not one large building. There are a number of facilities on the, on the project to include two swimming pools. And I'd like to point out that this is contiguous. It's a large piece of property. It's contiguous to the RFP property, which is being given to us. And it's directly across the street from the mall park. The only way we can give you the parking you require is to do a larger parking, a uh, larger project, which we've done. And this particular proposal uh, leaves you 154 parking spaces exclusive of our parking needs, which are to the city by code. And they would also be included in a garage. And we would have a specific entrance right from the street on the mall parking side that the public could use to go into the garage and get their car. So all you'd have to do is walk across the street. You don't have to walk over anybody else's property. Now, I show on my plans, you can see it, I showed the number of decks, the number of parking spaces. I broke them down. We're above the city's requirements for parking. I give you two spaces per residence, 150 spaces for the hotel, plus employees, another 20 uh, places for the restaurant, place for the retail, and I still have 154 left. My drawing shows parking bay widths of 10 feet. The city, in fact, allows you to go down to nine feet. If I did that, I could give the city an additional 30 parking spaces to make 184 spaces that the city could have back for their use. Are there any questions? I mean, I don't want to take up too much time, but I'm certainly available for questions. Well, we'll have questions at the end. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Rick Giralum. I'm an attorney. I represent the Valori Group. And I'm only going to take a few minutes because I understand time is precious and you want to get to other things. But the things that I want, that I was retained to do, and why I'm here is because I do have an intimate knowledge about the area of the Sands and the Ocean Mall. I have never represented the CRA in my career, but I have represented the city of Riviera Beach in the Ocean Mall lease renegotiations and in the Ocean Mall. And the reason that I came to, to know Mr. Valari and this project was because of the need by the Ocean Mall. The Ocean Mall was underdeveloped and underutilized, and the citizens, especially since the ocean has been redeveloped and your buildings are there, it's always been the feeling for the people on Singer Island that their cars might break if they made a left-hand turn out of the condos because there aren't the facilities, a hotel, um, a restaurant, amenities on or about the Ocean Mall. And for the mainland people, which is also equally important, they need access. The, the Ocean Mall, I think called the Ocean Walk now, I think it was just renamed, I apologize, I have it in my head that way, belongs to the citizens. The ocean belongs to the citizens. Riviera Beach has a motto, the best place to live, work, and play. And that is the magnet. The Ocean Mall area is the magnet and the access point for the citizens. And the parking that's there is inadequate. It's been inadequate. The buildings there are inadequate to be the magnet that the people can use. Now, the, as the project was just said, when I came to Mr. Valari, he, he's on the sands for a long time. And he's been, he was frustrated at the beginning and during this process. And there was times he considered even selling the sands. But as this developed and we worked with the CRA to understand their needs for the people, he has now come up with this plan. And some things that I want to make sure that that is under, understood and very important to me, because I've represented the city, I've seen how other projects have put the developer's hand in the city's pocket, in the CRA's pocket, and pulled out money and not delivered. This project is going to be financed completely by the Valari Group. We're not coming for infrastructure. We're not coming for a contribution. We're not coming for money in any way, shape, or form. The only thing that the Valari Group is coming for is the pledge of the land so the contiguous parcel can be assembled and it can be delivered. There is no cost 
to the city or the CRA other than the contribution of the land, and that was integral being that my history and knowledge of my representation. So with that being said, the, this is for the people, and this parcel is the closest you can get to the Ocean Mall, which belongs to the city, belongs to the people, belongs to the citizens. And every step closer you can get to the Ocean Mall for the citizens is a benefit to them. It's a benefit so they can live, work, and play there. The jobs will be there, the construction, the hotel, the restaurant, everything there. So you live and play. The people from the mainland will get the access. The people who are building and buying those condos on the ocean will have somewhere to go to. It is needed and it can't be done on the Ocean Mall property. But as I said, the closer you get, the better it is. And this is the closest parcel that I'm aware of that can be delivered for the use to create the magnet that the Ocean Mall was supposed to be, then that will never be due to its height restrictions and lease duration restrictions. You have nowhere else to go. This is, in my view, I haven't seen the other proposals, obviously, but in, I saw Mr. Valari's. I said, this is- Can I say is, something, Rick? Hold on. Hold on a minute. Take your time. We're being rushed. Okay. I feel for purposely the rush. <coughs> okay. Take your time. Four, I apologize if I'm going fast, I am doing it for now. It is important to deliver for the citizens. It is important for Riviera Beach. It is important for Singer Island. And this parcel, when you put it together, is, should be a unique opportunity. I know of no better and no other opportunity that can put the citizens literally within a foot in a meaningful way of the ocean wall in the ocean. And with regard to the public parking, I, with all due respect, I want to make sure that it's understood because numbers get thrown around easily. The dedicated to the public use is 154, can go up to 184 with the, with the, with the width, but that's not the end of it. And this, this is what I looked at. The hotel parcel, the hotel spots, there's an additional 170. That doesn't mean it can't be used by the public, it just means it has to be dedicated to, for the construction purposes. People who, who go to the hotel, who use the facilities, who go to the restaurant, are going to have access to those spots. So you're not talking about just the 154 or 184. You're also you're talking about an additional 170 on top of that that's going to be available. That's about 350 if my math is right. I apologize, I'm a lawyer, so I might not get math right. But in addition, the 240 on the condo, those, those may be segregated, there may be additional use. This is going to deliver a lot for the community. It is going to deliver a lot for the citizens. It's going to deliver a lot in revenue. The CRA generates its revenue, as I'm sure you know, off the increase in use of property. The construction on this is a huge project. It's going to have the impact fees that get paid, and I think it's going to be talked about. It's going to have the ongoing increase in tax revenue. It's going to create the magnet of areas around it. It is not simply parking. It is what should have been done around the Ocean Mall to create the magnet and create the destination that the Ocean Mall was supposed to do but couldn't but can now never deliver. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Sanchez. I'm president of D. Stevenson Construction. Um, I'm going to introduce my partner back here, Dwight Stevenson, uh, founder of the country of East Stevenson Construction. So we're, we are uh, African American old general contractors, been around for 25 years. We're actually the largest African American old general contractor in the state of Florida. Uh, been around, like I said, close to 30 years now in business. Uh, Mr. Uh, when Frank had to put together the team, he, he committed 25% to minority businesses on this project. And you're going to hear the numbers, what 25% represents a pretty big number on this particular project. So we have a team, a part of our team is Ryan Dobson with, with TSC uh, Construction uh, Total Solutions. They are, they're, we're, we're partnering with them on several projects. We actually have a mentor protege relationship with them. They'll be teaming with us to, to, to do our portion of the project. Um, D. Stevenson was part of the joint venture teams that actually built this facility here that we're in today. And we have a long-term commitment with the city of River and Beach to make sure that we engage local small minority businesses. In fact, over our history, our average is about 40% uh, small local business participation. Uh, one of the reasons why I enjoy working with, with, with Ryan is because he has a history of, of making sure that, his, that small businesses are engaged in, in the projects and also making sure local workforce is engaged in the project. We want to make sure this, this, we're not shipping people in from all over the place to work. We want to get local people involved with this project. 
One of those local people that we're gonna have involved in this project is Tony Williams and his firm, Tower Electric, a local river beach firm. And he's gonna be, uh, you know, we're looking forward to having him as part of the team as well. Um, you're gonna hear more about some other minority partners that we have as, as part of our team, but uh, I, wanna, I wanna give a chance to, uh, to, to, uh, Mr. Um, to Arnold Villar from, um, from LF Development to talk a little bit about the, the dollars on the project and how the project's gonna be developing the cost as well. So, uh, Arnold. Morning. Uh, my name is Arnold Villar. I'm with LF Development. Um, this project is about 20, uh, 20 stories. Uh, it costs about $189 million all in development costs. Uh, and construction on the hard cost is going to be about $77 million. And obviously, if you do the math on the uh, minority participation, you're going to notice it's going to be a substantial amount of money. Uh, impact fees alone is about a million dollars. Now, I just I couldn't get the number for the, uh, for the permit. <coughs> there was not a lot of information. I made some phone calls. I established it was going to be about a 3.5, 4.5% of the hard cost, and that came out to about $7.6 million all in impact and including the uh, permit fee. So it's a substantial amount of money. On um, the soft cost, uh, because it's a hotel, it's 150 keys, 120 residential, you've got a real diverse consultant base. So you've got from, you know, uh, architects, engineers, civil engineers, you know, the, the whole surrounding area needs to be upgraded because of course you've got a four-story building now you're going in with a 20-story building so that's going to increase and improve the surrounding areas from a landscaping you know curb and gutter storm water sewer so it's going to be a substantial uh, improvement it's going to be an anchor also to that area so it's going to draw you know folks from you know coming from either from the west south or north it's going to add again more improvements to this area um on the on the Architectural side of it, you know, I know that this is a CRA, but I know that this is an important look. I'm sure it's going to meet whatever the city requirements are going to be at that point. Um, if you got any numbers, questions, please let me know. Okay. We'll, we'll ask all questions. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Thank you. Uh, my name is Anthony Williams. I'm with Tower Electric. Uh, basically, I've lived in Rivera Beach pretty much all my life. Um, but I look forward to what this project is simply a lot of my younger people around that actually want to get into the trade. I believe in training them. Um, the problem is, is transportation. And I don't have that much local work. I've tried to go out to local work here, but unfortunately, it hasn't been much available. I mean, we had the Ivy Green, which is here in the States. And we weren't allowed the opportunity to get into that, even though we were there and bid in that project. This project has given us the opportunity to do that, and I look forward to probably bringing in as much as the local minority participation as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Randall Granberry. I'm with Agency Construction, but in our role today, um, we'll be owner's, represent uh, owner's representation for secured parking. Uh, we had a little technical difficulties. The managing director for secured parking wasn't able to be with us today. Um, we're gonna have him on video, but you know, we have some issues with that. But just to give you an overview of what secured parking is and what we provide to the team, um, we are an international parking company all over the world and in the United States. Ryan Hawkins, who's the managing director for the North American division, is based in Wisconsin, but they're in New, New Zealand, China, and about 20 other countries where they not only manage, but finance parking garages, surface parking, and things of that nature. So Mr. Valari approached us with this project and we committed to him if everything works out we're willing to look at financing the project and managing the part, project as well. Danny Jones over there is a, an associate of a, a Genesis Construction. He's a former member of the um, city of Riviera Beach. And just to note, um, that same, this same development that Joe mentioned, I was on the design side with Song and Associates. We designed Avenue C and did all of the um, site planning for the marina that, you, that stands here today. Thank you. All right. Any questions? So we're going to move into the question and portion, uh, question and answer portion of the interview. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. know if you guys, yeah. 
I know we have uh, multiple players, so we have multiple questions. So we're going to start to my left. So John, do you have any questions for the first question? Sure. John Gustafson, a uh, longtime resident on Singer Island, mechanical engineer and yacht designer. Also, and the president of the Singer Island Civic Association, and I'm on the Riviera Beach Planning and Zoning Board. Um, my only question to you is a great presentation. Thank you all for being here. And when I see the conceptual drawings, what is your feedback of how to work with the Singer Island residents to make sure that this property fits in with uh, regards to landscaping and green spaces? Well, I can comment on that. Before I would drop the next pencil on this, I would have meetings with those people. I'd show my conceptual drawings and take some input as to how and what changes they would like me to do and, and work with them as best as I could. I've already started to show how I broke up the elements and didn't build this huge monolithic structure. I've broken it up into more than one. But I'd certainly listen to the group and work with them. I'm, I'm not trying to go against them. I would work with them. Is the Valeri group thinking about adding more green spaces to the island and, and, and trees? Absolutely, and absolutely. In fact, I have an expert in that, in that who is very close to uh, Laszlo. Okay, he specializes in that. He's an architect and, a, and he specializes in green. He was even going to do the elevators and that new green thing, everything green. We're going to bring him in. Very well, thank you. Chris Laws, uh, I work for Desmond, we're architects and engineers, specifically for planning, design, and restoration of parking facilities. Uh, an interesting project and proposal. Uh, are you at you know, like a zero lot line on the development? Essentially, yes. And, yes. and you're requiring the, the uh, uh, easement or whatever over the city? Correct. Correct. Street and, okay. and note that just the parking deck does that. The high buildings are set well away from the property edges. Right, it's a 120 room hotel. Uh, yes. 150 room hotel. 150 room hotel. So how rest. many spaces are in the garage? There's uh, total. There's 613. Uh, not just in the garage. There's some on ground on the Okay. They don't, if, anyone, have you done any calculations on what the tax increment might be? No, the tax increment is not. Okay. All right, that's it. Okay. Glenn, Glenn Spiritus, uh, a former city manager, former director of planning and community development. Uh, I sit on the city's uh, housing authority now and the city's CDC uh, board. Uh, you realize that the island turns when you hit the Sea Winds condominium, and this is smack in the vista uh, for half the condominiums that are located on the island. Uh, is the height requirement negotiable? It's slightly negotiable, but the problem with that is you have to spread the buildings out. To get the number of spaces, spaces that you need as a surplus requires a large project. And so if I push the buildings down, the edges of the building would get larger, and I thought it would be best to not worry about the height as much as the voluminous of the building. I think that would be even a greater uh, problem for the residents than just height. So yes, I, I'm negotiable, but I have to do something to, uh, to get the required parking uh, for the city. OK, um, thank you. Um, one of my questions was already answered, but Andre Lewis, project manager with the CRA. Um, we talked about the zero lot line. Um, the financing, 100% I, I, financing would be, uh, you wouldn't look to the CRA or the city for any, uh, for any financing on this project. Financing. I have JV partners, three JV partners, each one of them has more than enough to, to build 10 times okay. this project. And no tax credits or anything like that? No, no, nothing. We're not looking for zero money from Riviera Beach, only to give, not to take. Okay. And the public, the parking that you are offering, it would be 100% public parking, full access? 100% full access. And like uh, uh, Steve said, 
uh, on the condos, I've been doing some research with the condo people, maybe one third of them will have one car. Okay, because a lot, a lot of them use Uber today. So there's another, and I'm working that out, but uh, I have a Hyatt hotel that wants to come in, Virgo wants to come in, but the Hyatt wants to do a high-end uh, uh, project over there, which is good. Uh, but they said maybe 30% of the parking spaces could be used for the town. So you'd have over 200 parking spaces that could be used for the town. But note that we've given you a proposal that satisfies the code of Rivera Beach and you still get 154 spaces, even though we satisfy the code completely. We're not asking for any uh, uh, extras on that. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm the banker. My name is Pierre Rodriguez. I'm a come here bank. That's why I, he tied in with, with, with that conversation. And my question was just around the financing. That, and then you want to have full control. You'll be actually doing the management of the property as well. Yeah, so oh, they're more they than They manage many hotels, okay. many properties. So the full management of the entire property. Absolutely everything. Okay. And we'll be providing basically a lot of job, permanent jobs. Besides the construction jobs, we're providing a lot of permanent jobs for the people in Riviera Beach, like in the hotel. <coughs> we're running the hotel, we are running the retail uh, spaces uh, below. Everything, or, parking. The uh, Economy condominiums, work. every tremendous amount of jobs that we're bringing in. Not only local participation, which nobody mentioned that, Steve, I got you on that one. <laughs> okay, local uh, participation, minority participation is 25%, but 25% of $192 million is $48 million. So there's $48 million going to local minority participation. But, and Fred not mentioned uh, that wasn't in that calculation uh, the, um, the percentage of, of minorities in our parking portion of right. that, that right. wasn't calculated in that 25%. So it's actually more than 25%. Now, what the total calculation is, we have, we have to come up with, but so just to let you know that. Okay? That's a good point. All right. Well, any additional questions, Pam? Well, Valari Group, I want to thank you for coming. Uh, you'll be hearing from us soon. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you. Thank